Hey guys, welcome back to the Ransom Notes podcast. Uh, Taylor here. And, you know, last week was kind of a busy week for me. Okay, I missed an episode. You might have noticed that. Um, had a lot going on. I hosted a great digital conference with my friend John um, for Theos. Um, but the big thing that happened last week was this. The Dove Awards was in town, ladies and gentlemen. The Dove Awards. I don't know if you know what the Dove Awards are, but it's like the Christian great value brand version of the Grammys. And basically what happens is, is like all these worship leaders, g- contemporary Christian artists and like Christian influencers get together. And we kind of just... Everybody just kind of pats themselves on the back and they sort of just, you know, tell themselves that they're important. Okay. I don't even know, like, if you go to the actual Dove Awards, I don't even know who picks the awards. I have no idea. Um, You know, it's not like fans are voting for these awards. I no clue who's picking these. You know, probably Chris Tomlin, if I had to guess. He's probably in the back just, like, reading off his friends' names. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll give them another Dove Award this year. No big deal. Um... (laughs) And, you know, that's what's going on. So I live in Nashville. Well, I don't live in Nashville. I should specify I live in Franklin, Tennessee, um, which is outside of Nashville. But you say Nashville because nobody knows what Franklin is. They only know Nashville. And um, all these people have descended into town last week. That's what happened. They all descended. You're seeing all these girls from the West Coast wearing white cowgirl boots and walking through downtown Franklin. It's hell. It's hell. I'll just be honest with you. It's hell. And um, if purgatory exists, it's Nashville during the week of the Dove Awards. That's what it is. Um, And so, you know, a lot going on. Lots happening there. Um, The Dove Awards happened. It was cool. I didn't go to the Dove Awards. I, you know, had better things to do, um, like laying at home, looking at my phone while I eat Nutella in peace. And but I did go to an after party. I went to the Dove Awards Bethel after party and it was a lot of fun. Um, I went there, just hung out with people, you know, all the big people are there. You're just like walking by. You're like, oh, my gosh, it's Carrie Job. Oh, oh, my goodness. Carrie Job. I do love Carrie. Carrie's great. We love Carrie Job so strongly. We love her so strongly. And, um, you know, So I had fun last week, okay? And we missed an episode. It happens. Um, But there are big things happening in the world this week. Um, We're going to get into some news. I know I've been saying I was going to do news on this show, and I haven't even done news (laughs) in, like, the first two episodes. Um, It's because we've had so much other stuff to cover, okay? I've been answering your questions, reacting to tiktoks and clips and tweets and stuff that you guys have sent in but this week we're going to look at some news Um, before we do that i will let you guys know about ransom society Um, ransom society is linked in the description of the show it's your way of supporting all of my content it goes to help me make what i make Um, and you guys actually get this show a day early you get it a day early released in there with no ads. Um, ads are coming to the show, I will tell you. I am at, at heart, okay? I have like 10% Kenneth Copeland in me, okay? 10% Kenneth Copeland. And, you know, he sits there and he's like, now, Taylor, to build the kingdom of God, you're going to need resources. And so, you know, I hear that and then I say yes to ad deals. Um, that's how that goes. So don't be surprised. But if you don't want those and you want to see the show a day early, in addition to that, you want to see some some like special content from me. Like we're, we do a segment at the end of this show that's just for Ransom Society members. You don't get to see it if you're on YouTube or Apple or whatever. Sorry. It's on Ransom Society. But it's a great way for you to support my content and get a little bit of extra stuff from me. Um, and get this show a day early. So thanks for checking that out. We have some news stories to talk about today, but I would be remiss if I did not mention the recent hurricanes, um, particularly Hurricane Helene, which has already severely affected so many people in this country. And now we have Hurricane Milton coming up on Florida. Um, these are very serious storms. Um, it's a very serious situation. Most of the time you hear about a storm coming to Florida and you always see the memes. Okay. You see the memes of people in Florida just kicking up their feet on the front porch, not worrying about it, but these are very serious. Um, and I just want people to know my prayers go out to them, um, to the people being affected. Um, it's very serious and I hope everyone's safe. I have nothing funny to say about it. It's not funny at all. It is. I'll, (laughs) I'll tell you what is funny is my, well, he doesn't want me to say this, but you know what? It's fine. My friend, Chris Palmer, Um, he's from Florida. He's not from Florida. He lives in Florida. And, um, he was the first person to sandbag and get out of Florida. I kid you not. He was the first one. Most Florida people are like, 
hanging out for a few weeks. Everything's fine. No, no, no. He literally left town last week um, and came up to where I live. He's like, hey, I, I'm going to crash. I'm like, get out of the storm, man, I guess. And now it's going to be it's going to be nuts. Um, and it's hilarious because his house is like literally in the path of the hurricane. <laughs> I say that it's really not funny at all. It's just funny to me. Oh, look who's calling me right now. Chris Palmer's calling me. Hey, Chris. Taylor. Brother Chris, I literally was just on my pod. I'm recording my pod right now, and I was telling them that you were the first person to leave Florida for the storm because you're scared. Did, did you, um... <laughs> no, that was the Holy Spirit, brother. Was the <laughs> it was the I Holy Spirit, to... okay. I had, I had my ear to the ground. I wake up every morning at 4 o'clock, and I put my ear to the ground. I say, Lord, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me Lord. Yeah, surely that's what it is. That's, yep, was, for sure. My ear, my ear was at the ground. I heard the Lord say, I, I saw an M. I said, Lord, what is this? Lord said, I saw an I. I said, M I. My my dad's name is Mike. Am I praying for my dad? Then I saw an L. I said, I'm not praying for my dad. Surely, what am I interceding for, Lord? And the Lord said, Milton. Oh. I, said, I said, Lord, that's the name. That's the name of the tropical depression. The Lord said, Son, I want you to put gas in your car and I want you to head north. <laughs> okay. Okay, said, well, praise how, God. How far? I said, Lord, how far north should I head? And the Lord said, you just keep going, and I'll tell you when to stop. And I was driving, and the Lord said, hey, son, who's your favorite Who's your favorite president? I said, Lord, I, I love George Washington. The Lord said, I know, but I want, you, I want you to think about Ben Franklin. I said, Lord, he's not a president. And the Lord said, you go to Franklin, Tennessee, son. <laughs> God, God forgot that Benjamin Franklin was never the president of this country, apparently. Apparently. So I said, Lord, I'll, I'll go. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you were obedient. I'm glad you're obedient and safe now. Yep. And then I realized why God brought me up here. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Mm, assignment. I've been, every strong, I've, I've been breaking every stronghold since I've been up here. Since I left, I've noticed that there's more strongholds. Mm. Here. There's more strongholds. So I've been... I've been prayer walking and breaking strongholds in Franklin, Tennessee. All the people from California can call them strongholds. Well, praise God. Well, I'm glad that you're walking in your Pentecostal anointing and God's keeping you safe. And now you're up here contending in Franklin, Tennessee for a revival because that's where they need it the most. I will say that Franklin, Tennessee needs it. Revival, brother. I, have a, I, I put a bumper sticker on my car that says, All roads lead to revival. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Well, I'm going to let you go. I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of the show. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for being an uh, okay. unexpected where guest. My, where, can I, where can I send my, where can I send my link for a, a sea time offering, a special miracle faith offering? <laughs> we will link to your cash app for sure. Your, your cash app and your Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother Taylor. Praise God. Praise I'll see you, Praise sir. Pray for us. Oh, right. Of course. Bye. Well, you heard it there first, folks. Um, completely unexpected. I had no idea that was going to happen. Um, but we are praying for the people that have been severely affected by these storms. I saw a really good clip about what's going to happen with this storm. Uh, honestly, it terrified me. I'm being completely honest right now. Let's go to the clip. So what does that look like? Well, let's show you. Imagine this. Imagine three feet of storm surge right here. Now, if this amount of water catches you by surprise, it's too late to evacuate. Cars are floating around and floating away. There's large objects in here that could knock things down with a battering ram-like force. Now, there's no way, again, to evacuate with this kind of storm surge. But we know there's going to be places with more than three feet. Imagine six feet of storm surge. Now, this completely floods out the first floors of homes and businesses. And the only way to escape that is to move to the higher floor of a building. Now, unfortunately, there are going to be places that get more than six feet of storm surge flooding. Imagine this, nine feet and even beyond of flooding, of inundation. This is practically not survivable. So please follow the advice of your local officials when they ask you to evacuate. And if you have any questions about what evacuation zone you're in, if you need to go and or where you need to go, go to floridadisaster.org. And by all means, everybody, Please stay safe. So this is all very serious. Um, I could not imagine having a family and knowing that that is coming to my neighborhood and having to decide 
like what belongings you're taking with you because when you come back there might be nothing left um not only that but just getting your family out safely um and of course i mean people who are living paycheck to paycheck i mean imagine imagine just imagine how that would feel um and and we don't even have to imagine we see people displaced um, in different states of our country who have been affected by this hurricane. You can't scroll through social media for five minutes without seeing firsthand uh, and secondhand accounts um, of people who have been affected by this. I mean, there's people stranded. They have nowhere to go. Um, they can't even get out of the states. And, you know, they're stuck there. And our government's response is to offer them a $750 loan. I don't know if you guys have seen that. But that was FEMA's basic response is like, hey, we can't give you guys any money. We can lend you $750, um, which is incredible. I mean, th that's just disgusting, to be honest, because you guys had $50 billion to send to foreign countries. Um, you guys have $50 billion to send to any country that you decide needs it, but you can't help out, you know, your own people, your own citizens in this country. Um, and, you know, of course, people have been politicizing this, um, you know, that's, of course, going to happen. We've got a couple clips that somebody sent in. Um, it was hilarious because we see somebody's asking um, Vice President Kamala Harris and then someone's also asking President Joe Biden um, about their about how Governor DeSantis is preparing and responding to the storm that's about to hit Florida. Let's go ahead and take a look at these clips. Um, let's watch the first one um, with Kamala. Governor DeSantis, NBC is reporting Governor DeSantis is ignoring your calls on hurricanes, resources, and, and help. How does that hurt the situation here? You know, moments of crisis, if, if nothing else, should really be the moment that anyone who calls themselves a leader says they're going to put politics aside and put the people first. People are in desperate need of support right now. And playing political games at this moment in these crisis situations, these are the height of emergency situations. It's just utterly irresponsible, and it is selfish, and it is about political gamesmanship instead of doing the job that you took an oath to do, which is to put the people first. Um, she hasn't put a single person first. <laughs> um, um, she's just mad that Governor DeSantis isn't taking her phone calls. Um, and why would he? He's on the phone with Joe Biden. Why would you go and deal with the vice president when you can deal with the president? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. He, somebody asked um, Joe Biden about Governor DeSantis. Let's see what he said. The governor of Florida has been cooperative. He said he's gotten all that he needs. I talked to him again yesterday. And I, and I said, whatever. I said, no, you're doing a great job. It's being all being done well. We thank you for it. And I literally gave my personal phone number to call. Um, so I don't know. There was a rough start in some places, but every governor, every governor from Florida to North Carolina has been fully cooperative and supportive and acknowledged what this team is doing. And they're doing an incredible job. But we got a lot more to do. Wow. So on one hand, we have the vice president, um, you know, beating up on Governor DeSantis, and then we have the president saying he's doing a great job. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on in the White House, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Are the girls fighting? I think the girls are fighting. I think they're fighting um, because, you know, Kamala is kind of politicizing the situation. Um, you know, what does she what could she really do anyway, though? She's the vice president. There's nothing she can do that the president couldn't do. Um, and she's reaching out, you know, DeSantis isn't taking her calls. She's mad. She's making her comments, talk, accusing DeSantis of politicizing the situation. And then here's Joe Biden saying that he's doing a great job. I don't know what kind of job he's doing. I don't live in Florida. I don't have the info on that, but it is funny to see. Um, and you know, American politics right now, it's a very interesting time to live in because it's a mess. Okay. It's a total mess mess. American politics has become this sort of gladiator fight that never ends, that we're just watching constantly, especially during election season. Um, but something a little bit funnier, someone sent me this clip on Twitter. Um, I guess Donald Trump went on Andrew Schultz podcast, which is awesome. And I love it. I love Andrew Schultz. Um, and I think that's hilarious. They sent me this clip. Andrew Schultz was asking Donald Trump about Elon Musk 
Um, everybody saw that picture of Elon jumping everywhere like a homeschool kid at that rally. I thought that was hilarious. He literally looks like a homeschooler. If you didn't know what Christian homeschoolers look like, that's what they look like. They have the belt buckle and they leap around and jump around all the time. Um, and then, you know, let's see what Andrew Schultz asked Donald Trump about this. Elon interviewed me on something. Yeah. yeah. And I think they said 275 million wow. hits. Or That's a lot. That's a lot of people. That was a, a That's record. a nation. Yeah. But it's a whole new, different way of uh, Can getting, I ask you a getting the word out, right? About Elon specifically. Is he your favorite African American? <laughs> <laughs> he's a piece of work. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, he's a great guy. Yeah. With, I mean, he's obviously a brilliant guy. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the rocket engines come back, I said, what is that? Like a couple of years ago, you never seen rockets go up and yeah. then they crash into yeah. the water. Yeah. <laughs> and I see the the engines are coming back and they're landing. It's, very, it's unbelievable. They're landing and and they land on a raft in the middle of the ocean someplace yeah. with a little dot and they land right on the top of the yeah. spot. And my wife can't parallel park. I know. It's just, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, most people can't. But anyway, um, I just thought that was hilarious. Um, that's just such. A, that's an insane question. People don't know that that Elon Musk actually is from South Africa. I think enough people know it to get the joke at this point. Um, but insane question. Yeah, absolutely insane question. Um, we have something a little bit off topic that I saw that also petrified me. I don't know if you guys have heard about um, Meta's new AI glasses that they're making. Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, he seems to have this thing. He thinks he's Steve Jobs, and he's not. He's not Steve Jobs. He's constantly trying to launch hardware products that don't work. But this scared me because a group of Harvard students took the Meta Smart glasses that they just um, released, just put out. They're those, uh, those Ray-Ban Meta Smart Band glasses. They have the camera on the side. And um, they hacked it. They completely hacked the thing. And they made it to where it can literally look at people and dox them in seconds. It literally looks at somebody, scans their face through Google Images, and uh, scrapes public directories to find their personal information. We've got a clip on it. It's a little bit scary, not going to lie, but let's check it out. To use it, you just put the glasses on. Then as you walk by people, the glasses will detect when somebody's face is in frame. This photo is used to analyze them, and after a few seconds, their personal information pops up on your phone. Uh, Cambridge Community Foundation. Oh, hi, ma'am. Wait, are, are you a uh, Betsy? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I, uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. Oh wait. Oh, so you, do you happen to be a person working on like like minority stuff for like Muslims in India at all or yes, something? Me, yes. Really? Yes, Are you Kashif? Yes. Oh, I've read your work before. It's super Wait, cool. So here's how it works. We stream the video from the glasses straight to Instagram and have a computer program monitor the stream. We use AI to detect when we're looking at someone's face. Then we scour the internet to find more pictures of that person. Finally, we use data sources like online articles and voter registration databases to figure out their name phone number, home address, and relatives' names. And it's all fed back to an app we wrote on our phone. Is your address for <laughs> Valley? <Yeah. laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, 303. Yeah. Is uh, oh my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anything, but yes. <laughs> also attended <laughs> Yale's the Young the Global Scholar Summer <laughs> Program, right? <laughs> really? Yeah, oh. these, are, these are me in like middle school. Oh my God. Oh my what about gosh. John and Susan? Are they your... Uh, Parents. Parents? Okay. Oh my gosh. We're doomed. We are absolutely doomed, ladies and gentlemen. If you listened on audio, to give you a little bit of information there, it's the Harvard student who hacked the glasses just walking around looking at, at people and then asking them this, this personal information about themselves. Did you go to so-and-so college? He asked this one girl, is your address? And he listed it off absolutely insane we're doomed i don't know any other way to say that privacy is completely dead um and the fact that now they're putting this in glasses i mean can you imagine if this if this power fell into the wrong hands i feel like i'm talking about green goblin from spider-man now um absolute insanity mark zuckerberg needs to shut that down now this minute, Zuck, stop getting the new haircuts and buying the gold chains and fix whatever the heck that is. Um, that's terrifying. 
Um, something also that is terrifying, um, not as much so, but it's still up there, um, is this recent moment from Russell Brand. I like Russell Brand. I saw this picture, though, and I saw people freaking out about it, so I figured let's talk about it a little bit. Here he is. He's baptizing people. Russell Brand said it might seem a bit soon to be baptizing people, but the apostles did it on day one, so here we are. He's out here baptizing um, in his whitey tidies, ladies and gentlemen. He's in straight up whitey tidies, okay? Um, not even just like boxers. Like he's out here in the Hanes, Walmart, whitey tidies. He stripped his clothes off and he's baptizing people. Um, I saw a lot of I saw a lot of people getting upset with him and thinking that he was doing this to like show off in some way. Um, that's ridiculous. That's not what happened here. He put out another video and responded um, and said that he was just out and it was spontaneous baptisms. He didn't intend to. Um, somebody just asked him if he'd baptize them and he didn't have any other clothes. So he just took his clothes off and he baptized them in the lake. But if you've ever wondered what Russell Brand looks like in his whitey tidies, well, there you go. No one's talking about his, his armor bearer over there on the left who's also in his underwear. No one's talking about that. That guy went off Scott's free. No one's bringing it up with him. Just Russell. Um, but, you know, you love to see it. Russell Brand said it might seem a bit too soon to be baptizing people, but the apostles did it on day one. That's not exactly true, okay? If, like, if we want to get into semantics, like, look, I'm a homeschooler, okay? I only read the Bible the first 12 years of my life. That's not, mm, that's not entirely true there, okay, as far as day one. I, I don't believe they were baptizing people on day one. I'm not mad about them baptizing people. That's whatever, fine, go do it. Just buy some Walmart shorts or something, man. They're basketball shorts. They're $5 at Walmart um, because not everybody needs to see that, okay? That's just my main thought. I, honestly, I love Russell Brand. It's no hate or tea or shade, his way, but it was hilarious. I saw the clip and it was hilarious. Um, we have one more segment we're going to do on this show. Um, actually, uh, I recently did a stream. I was streaming on Twitch and my friend called me and it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. Uh, it was actually Chris Palmer. Chris Palmer called me once again and it was such a funny clip. It's like a nine minute long phone call. And it was like one of the funniest things that I've ever seen happen spontaneously. We're going to put that on the show for Ransom Society members. If you're watching from there, if you're not, thank you for watching the show. I will see you next week. Love you very much. And if you have any suggestions for this show, um, anything you think I should react to, be sure to send those in on my Instagram at Real Taylor Ransom. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next week.